Hey, I'm Lise Colucci. I'm one of the life coaches at queenbeing.com. Um, we are going, whoops, sorry. We're going to talk today about healthy relationships versus toxic relationships. A lot of people will ask, what does a healthy relationship even look like? Or they question the one they're in being toxic, sometimes having a little comparison to what is healthy and what healthy looks like can help you break free from trauma bonds and get out of things that are toxic for you in your life, um, or at least give you something to, something to uh, compare with, right, so that you can make your own choices. A healthy relationship has a foundation of trust a foundation of um, safe, trusting, stability, security, and respect. There's regularity that is predictable. Contrast that with a toxic relationship. It's insecure. It is unsafe. It is walking on eggshells. It is um, constantly filled with intermittent reinforcement. And if you don't know what that is, it is giving you love bombing and devaluing, praise and tearing you down, idealizing and destroying you um, intermittently, meaning not on a regular schedule, just randomly. You don't know when it's coming. It's it's unpredictable. Talk, health, toxic relationships are unpredictable. They um you don't know if that other person is going to show up there for you, if they're going to have your back, if they're going to be there. Okay, so there's the major obvious difference. Let's go over some contrasting things. Mutual respect. A healthy relationship, there is mutual respect. In a toxic relationship with a narcissist, you've got one-sided respect that's expected to be given toward the narcissist while you sit there and get disrespected over and over whether it be in every area of your life, right? Okay. Um, emotional intimacy in a healthy relationship can look like sharing, listening, active listening. Whoa, what's that when you have a narcissist around, right? Um, um, kindness in that when you are sharing something emotionally difficult for you, the person is not threatening. They are safe. They are um, available right? In a relationship with a narcissist that is toxic, there's emotional withholding. There's demands on your emotions. There's, um, there's emotional demandingness that you give to them, but don't receive, or that you accept the breadcrumbs that you're given. There's a lack of trust with, with intimacy. I'm talking about emotional intimacy, but that goes into all intimacy, right? There's safe, there's lack of safety. You never feel safe. And yet you keep being drawn to give them your emotional, you know, to, you can tell them your emotional needs. They're never received. They're never met. They're never heard. Not that healthy relationships, your emotional needs are always met. That isn't the case. In a healthy relationship, we'll talk about conflict in a, in a minute. Okay. We're going to, I'm just kind of giving the overview of one versus the other. Then we'll talk about conflict. So stay tuned because I think the conflict part is the most important for when we're dealing with how to look for red flags and how to, um, keep ourselves safe and how to know if your relationship is healthy or not. And where, I mean, okay. And here's something I want to say first, not every relationship that isn't healthy is with a narcissist. We deal with narcissists here. And so I am focusing it more on that, but, but I don't believe every health, un, every unhealthy exchange within a relationship means that that person's a narcissist, not in any way. Okay. And we all have, our relationships aren't all one thing or another. When you're in a healthy relationship, it's going to have parts of it that need work. That's just life. That's just, especially if you're older and you, uh, you know, have, have had trauma and have had uh, toxic relationships in your life. We have to learn and grow. But a marker of a healthy relationship is one that can learn and grow. When you're with a narcissist or a toxic person that is, um, a cluster B personality type, you're not going to see a lot of growth in the relationship. You will see a lot of growth within yourself, but it will never go anywhere because the relationship itself is toxic. When you have, I'm going to say what I say over and over again right now. 
I, I, I look at relationships like a soup, okay? When you're putting in soup, putting your ingredients in the soup, and I say this all the time, so if you've heard it a million times, sorry. <laughs> you're putting a bunch of ingredients in the soup. The other person's putting a bunch of ingredients in the soup. You're creating what is called the relationship. So your your needs, their needs, your, your concerns, their concerns, right? Okay. Every now and then, one of you throws in something weird like an old boot. And you're like, ew, why'd you put an old boot in the soup? That's an argument. That's a bad mood. That's a, um, a, a point of conflict that needs resolution. Okay. You pull that soup out, you look that boot out, you look at it and you discuss and you have a debate or whatever you need to do to talk about whether that soup belongs, that boot belongs in the soup, right? Probably not. You throw it out, you work on it. Sometimes it takes a little adjusting of ingredients, adjusting of what you do, both of you to repair this soup so that it is still edible, okay? Now, when you have a narcissist in the mix, as the other person, they are not throwing ingredients in the soup, they're throwing poison in the soup. They're throwing poison in the soup because it's a lacking accountability, it is lacking the empathy needed to maintain a healthy relationship, and it's lacking um, the care and compassion that's needed to go into growing a relationship with someone else. Okay, so they're throwing poison in the soup. There is no way to pull out any ingredients and have that ingredient not be completely saturated in poison. So the relationship itself becomes toxic. There isn't a way to fix it. It's not because you're not good enough. It's not because you don't try hard enough. It's not because you have anxiety or you have or you get reactive. It's none of that. Okay, the poison in the soup is the problem. The person pouring the poison in the soup is the problem. So let's go back to what is healthy and what is not healthy. Respectful conflict resolution, respectful conflict engagement is healthy. You should be able to have respectful conflict. That's not going to say it looks pretty when people just sit there and go, oh, yes, dear, your turn. Oh, yes, dear. No, it's going to look like it looks between two people depending on their own personalities, right? But when you have a toxic relationship, you have things like gaslighting, projecting, lack of accountability, blame shifting, lying, deceit, all the stuff that goes along with a toxic relationship. Within the conflict, in a healthy relationship, there is open and direct communication. Of course, this isn't 24 seven, all right? This is just the majority of the relationship is you're able to be at ease, to be open and direct with your needs, your feelings, your thoughts, your beliefs, your understandings of things. There's a flow that is open and direct. In a toxic relationship, we, again, we have gaslighting. Every time we try to be direct, we have passive aggressive jabs. We have, um, we have the, uh, what do we call those? The, the backsided compliments all of that going on that is not, you know, or, or just their way of communicating is, is it lacks open and directness, right? Or overt directness that is cruel. It's a direct cruelty. So when I say open and direct communication, I mean kind communication, okay, in a healthy relationship. In a healthy relationship, you will feel supported. You will feel like someone has your back. You feel in a healthy relationship, secure and comfort, comforted, comfortable, okay? In an unhealthy relationship, you feel insecurity and pain. You feel like you're walking on eggshells all the time, okay? Um, in a healthy relationship, you will feel you have shared values. Um, in a relationship with a nar narcissist there will be some shared values of course this isn't again this is not black and white this is there's a this is a very colorful <laughs> area thing to think about okay but with them you will find more often or very often one-sided um one-sided values like you're forced to follow their path and you don't have your own you're forced to listen to their beliefs you don't have your own okay there's equal power in healthy relationship. That doesn't mean all the time for all things. They're going to, one person might have a little more say in one area because it's what they're good at and another, you know what I mean? But, they, but it's, it's, it feels okay. You're not, you're not just giving up your power. You're not giving up your agency. You're not doing for someone and getting nothing. Um, and then expected to give more. There's equal power in, um, in that nobody feels 
afraid to do or say something because they'll because of a power play about to happen. It, with a toxic person, there are power plays. There's a constant struggle for power. There's power games, and you'll find yourself feeling the need to control things often because of this power play that they're putting into the relationship because, because everything they're doing is to maintain power. In a healthy relationship, there is trust and honesty. If you're in a toxic one, you're laughing right now going, what the heck is that? <laughs> right? In an unhealthy relationship, you can't trust a dang thing. You, you, you're constantly having to keep track, constantly having to uh, wonder what the other person's doing, wonder what, what they're up to, what they're into, who they're with, all of that. There's no trust or how they're going to treat you. Okay. Um, in a healthy relationship, there's growth. I said that. In, in, there is... Um, each person will have their own interests and their own and they're capable and able and allowed to go pursue those interests. Now that can again vary from relationship to relationship. Sometimes you share a lot of interests and so there isn't a whole lot of that. Or sometimes there's just not time. You got kids, you got work, you got one or two things you're interested in and there's just not, not time so it feels like you're not having that met. So you got to look at the bigger picture, but with a toxic person, they're going to control your comings and goings, what you do, what you don't do. They're going to, they're going to hate your friends. They're going to hate your hobbies. They're going to hate your, they're going to tear down your career, that kind of thing. Okay. You should minimally be able to have a job, right. <laughs> and have that, uh, have the other person support you for bringing the income in and for, for the job you do and, and like help you feel good about it. All right. In a healthy relationship, you feel loved in a toxic relationship. You feel not good enough ever. Um, in a healthy relationship, the conflict, there is a direct non-accusing dialogue. In that direct dialogue, people are using I statements. I feel like blah, blah, blah. I've noticed that blah, blah, blah. They're not blaming. When you have a toxic relationship, there's so much bullying going on, so much secrecy, so much lack of accountability that you can't ever get to a healthy dialogue. Because if you try to have a healthy dialogue about anything, the most minor things with a narcissist, if you try to say, hey, I'm concerned about how we're, we're late all the time to see friends. Um, what do you think about trying to get out of the house 10 minutes early? Sounds pretty non-confrontational to me. No one's being accused. We're saying we here. We're saying, we're stating the problem. What's a narcissist going to say? What are you accusing me of being the one that causes you're the one that blah, 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 or, or, or don't you tell me how to manage my time or, you know, they're going to, they're going to meet that with an argument. There's daily connection in, in a healthy relationship. You connect with each other on a, on a level beyond just, Hey, how was your day? But like, really, Hey, how was your day? <laughs> like concern, connection, the, um, I, you you feel it when you have that real connection with a narcissist. There is never connection. It's only connection going toward them. When they do pay attention to you, it's usually surface things, things they're trying to control or a love bombing. And then it goes away. And, and they don't actually act on the things they're connecting with. So with daily connection, when you have conflict, that means you have a place to discuss. It means you have time to connect and, and hash out the things you need to. With a narcissist, you don't get that, okay? The toxic person, you're not going to. In a healthy conflict, there's empathy and a gentle approach toward each other's needs and feelings. Gentle meaning, non-accusatory. So in a toxic, it'll be blaming, gaslighting, lack of accountability, and shutdown that happens when you're talking about your feelings or your needs. And except their needs are supposed to be 100% met and you're supposed to know what they are. <laughs> okay. Um, accountability is, is a high level thing with, for healthy conflict. It's having both parties have accountability. Now, is it going to be there 100% of the time? No, but it should be present or at least um, part of the deal right? From both people. With a narcissist, as we know, then I'm one of the biggest traits for spotting narcissism or um, most cluster B types that are toxic is lack of accountability. They blame everything on everyone else. They hide from the truth. They gaslight you when there's, when there's anything that they should be taking accountability for. That's the way it is. All right. In a healthy conflict in a relationship, it is moving toward a goal to improve things, to meet someone's need, to meet a need of the relationship, to 
to just to air what we need to air to vent to one another the things we need to vent and then and then move towards something better right in the toxic relationship it becomes circular the arguments are circular the battles are circular there's never conflict resolution there's never because of the lack of accountability no one's moving toward anything all right okay so in a healthy relationship there's you learn each other's styles and you learn what the other person needs and what you need in order to recover so you can come back together from a place of understanding not ego basically a healthy conflict does not let the ego lead it's gonna be there you don't want to back down you don't want i mean it's not like it's natural to just be like oh you're right you know like <laughs> i'm i don't have a feeling about that you know no your 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 feelings plus your ego to, to need to be right is going to be present sometimes right but in a healthy relationship we back out back away from that and consider the whole of the relationship we consider the other person as well as ourself not just them okay and not just us but the but the way it works between the two of you so that, and then taking space to recover so that when you come back together to have to resolve it, you're, you're in a better place. You're in a better place in your own head. Okay. They won't give you space in a toxic relationship or they shut down in silence and call it space. That's not space. Space is, Hey, I need some space right now. I'll be back in five minutes or whatever. You know, that's not, not silent treatment. Um, toxic communication, bullying, blaming, blame shifting, you statements, you know, it's your fault. Um, gaslighting, all the ways of gaslighting and lots of videos on gaslighting. We'll do another one soon, but I've got a bunch on here. Um, no accountability. They shut you out. They shut down. They go silent. They punish. It's punitive. Unhealthy, toxic uh, conflict is punitive, uh, punishing. It is, um, there's yelling, there's slamming sometimes, or there's silence, and there's stone cold gazes, and there's lack of empathy, lack of compassion, lack of understanding, lack of awareness of your feelings or the feelings of for the relationship itself. Often that's what we're looking for, right? Do you care about this relationship? <laughs> it's not even a me thing, it's an us thing. Yeah. Whereas, um, there's no connection and there's no empathy. 